Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's the first time you're visiting. So today I'm going to be doing a video all about elegant floral fragrances for women. Now I love a floral fragrance, I have a lot of them in my collection, but when I think about elegant floral fragrances, they don't all suit that type of profile in my opinion. I have a lot of fruity florals in my collection. I have a lot of loud and bold floral fragrances, but this is gonna be all about fragrances that I would perceive as elegant. So if you like the sound of that, then please do keep on watching. The first fragrance that I wanna talk about is by Nishane and it is 100 Silent Ways. And this one is such a beautiful, beautiful, elegant floral fragrance. I'm gonna give you a close up of the bottle. I would almost consider this to be a gourmand floral, but not gourmand in terms of it's edible. It's more gourmand because it has this beautiful sweetness to it. I do get a little bit of fruit as well, I have to say that. So it is a fruity floral, but I do think it fits the elegant category very well. I'm actually wearing this one today and I can smell it in the air and it's absolutely intoxicating. I love that kind of white fuzzy peach note that's in the composition. And then you get lots of those beautiful white florals. Now, again, this is a tuberose fragrance, not dominant in tuberose, I would say, but it's got a tuberose note in there. And if you watch my channel, you know I'm not the biggest fan of tuberose, but it's growing on me and I adore 100 Silent Ways, so maybe something's changing in my taste, who knows. But this has beautiful white florals, including jasmine, gardenia, and tuberose. It does have a peach note too, which I perceive to be more of a fuzzy white peach, if that makes any sense. Super delicious, very, very ripe. And then it does have orris in here too. And I wouldn't say it gives it an earthiness, which orris normally does, but it does balance out that sweetness just a little bit. And I mean a little bit because this is still very much a sweet fragrance. I really do pick out the vanilla and the sandalwood in the base, but I must say those white florals are very prominent throughout. So you're definitely getting the tuberose, you're definitely getting the gardenia, and you're definitely getting the jasmine, and then the peach note stays throughout on my skin at least. It is sweet, it's almost like the florals have been crystallized and they're a little bit sugary. And you are just gonna smell like that girl if you wear this one. I think it suits all times of year. I think it suits all occasions. I would class this as an everyday fragrance too. And if you like the sound of the notes in the description that I've just given you, I would highly recommend hunting down 100 Silent Ways and getting yourself a decant and trying this one out because I think this is such a beautiful fragrance. And this will be a fragrance that will be in my collection for many years to come. This is the 50 ml size bottle, so it's a little bit slimmer. The 100 ml looks the same from the front, but obviously it's more of a cube. So I'll be getting the 100 ml next when I go through this bottle, but that was Nishane 100 Silent Ways. The next elegant floral fragrance that I wanna talk about is by Kiale, and this one is Deja Vu White Flowers. And this one is definitely an elegant fragrance. And it has notes that are a little bit similar to 100 Silent Ways, but to me, they smell very different, but they share the same notes. And I'm just thinking about my list. We'll go there when we go there. But there's a little bit of a tuberose theme going on here. Who am I? Where's Hayley? Because tuberose, you would have never seen me loving tuberose fragrances two years ago. And now, apparently I'm drawn to them but it's when the tuberose isn't necessarily front stage and center. So Deja Vu White Flower by Kiale also has the same notes as 100 Silent Ways in terms of it has the jasmine, it has the gardenia, and it also has the tuberose. But then you swap the peach out for a nectarine and it's giving you that same kind of really ripe and juicy vibe for sure. You also have a little bit of orange blossom which takes us in a little bit of a different direction and then a juicy pear note up top. It shares sandalwood and vanilla in the base too. I don't think they smell similar, I just wanna say that, but they are in that kind of elegant floral fragrance family as per the video title. And I think this is another fragrance that suits all occasions, all times of year, it's one of those easy reaches. It's gonna leave you smelling elegant, chic, and very put together. It is maybe a little bit more of a lighter wear than 100 Silent Ways, 
but Deja Vu White Flower actually does stick to my skin. Some Kiale fragrances last about four hours on my skin and then others are beast mode like Vanilla Royale and they will last all day. I would say this one is more in the five to six hour wear mark for me personally, but I just think it's such a beautiful fragrance. Every time I smell it, I am blown away by how effortlessly gorgeous it is. And if you've never tried Deja Vu White Flowers by Kiali, I would highly recommend either going to a local department store that stocks it and sampling it, or maybe getting one of their 10 mil travel atomizers, because I don't want to say it's underrated by Kiali, but I think it maybe doesn't get as much love as some of the other fragrances like Vanilla 28, like Love Fest, like Eden Juicy Apple. So yeah, this was my second recommendation, and it is Kiali Deja Vu White Flowers. The next fragrance is just one I adore, truly, truly adore. And it is none other than Ex Nihilo's Fleur Narcotique. And this fragrance just feels very me when I wear it. Just intoxicated by it, truly. And I think it's one that, I don't know, I need to redo my top 10 for life, but it could be in that list. So we'll see, no spoilers. So this is a close up of the bottle, you know, very standard Ex Nihilo packaging nice tidy looks good on the shelf but nothing truly special to be fair but the juice inside is what draws me in and this one does not have tuberose but it has all of the other fragrance notes that i truly truly adore within a floral fragrance it has peony it has orange blossom it has jasmine and it has petalia but right up top, you're getting that very juicy lychee note. You're also getting bergamot and peach. And I do really love a peach note in fragrances. It has to be said. And in the base, it goes a little bit musky, not too much. It also has a moss note, but I feel like it gives it the earthiness it needs to cut through the bergamot, the lychee and the peach. And it kind of balances this fragrance. And then there are woody notes too. And I just feel so feminine, so elegant and so chic when I wear Fleur Narcotti. I do think it would be the most beautiful bridal scent and I am so close to picking this for my wedding day. I don't know. We will see how that one goes. But yeah, if you like those really beautiful, feminine, pretty sweet floral fragrances that have an almost tart, fruity edge to it, then I would highly recommend checking out Fleur Narcotique if you have not already. But a peony in floral fragrances is just a note I adore so, so much. Please do let me know if you've tried Fleur Narcotique and let me know your thoughts because not everyone loves this one. And I can kind of understand that. It's almost within the same family as Delina. They don't smell the same, but you get that tartness up top. And it might not resonate with everyone, but I absolutely adore it. I've already gassed on about this. It's a very beautiful scent, and I think it's an elegant floral. So that was Ex Nihilo Fleur Narcotique, and this one's a very special fragrance to me. True love. The next fragrance is very new in my collection and it is by Atelier Materi and this one is called Narcisse Taji and I hope I'm pronouncing that one correctly. And I think Atelier Materi bottles are really unique. I'm hoping this is picking up on camera. They're in this beautiful kind of dark blue bottle. You have a concrete cap and then this gold detailing and they are very unique on the market. So when you go into a retailer and you see these, it does stand out in my opinion. And I just think they look very classy on display. But let's get into the scent. It's got tuberose again. Yes, we're on a tuberose theme and it's another tuberose fragrance that I like. And that says a lot to me because I'm definitely growing into the tuberose note. And if you're a tuberose lover, then you 100% need to check this one out because I think it's phenomenal. And if you're not a tuberose lover, then maybe you should also check this one out. So the notes are tuberose and narcissus. They are the two main floral notes that I get to my nose. You absolutely pick those up within the composition. This one smells completely different to anything in this list. You've got this really beautiful zesty ginger note up top, and then you also have a juicy pear note. So that definitely adds all of the sweetness you need. But there are some very interesting notes within this composition, which take down the sweetness quite a lot. I still feel like this is sweet, but it's not a overbearing sweetness. It has hay and bran. Yeah, let me say that again, hay and bran. 
And it definitely gives this a, not a straw kind of smell, but maybe a little bit like straw. It smells a little bit like hay, I have to say. But when you add the tuberose, you add the narcissus, you add the ginger and the pear, it makes it really unexpected. And I don't know really how to perceive a brand note, but this is so unique. I've never smelled anything like it, not in my collection anyway, and not in the retailers when I've gone sampling and sniffing. You get a little bit of musk in the base and a little bit of patchouli and leather, but honestly, the base notes, I don't pick out that much. It really is a Narcissus and Tuberose dominant fragrance. The ginger actually lasts throughout the wear on me anyway. You definitely get that pear and that hay note. I wouldn't necessarily say this is gonna be a safe blind purchase, so I would highly recommend trying to get a decant or sample in it, but if you're looking for a unique white floral, something with a little bit of an edge and something that is absolutely gonna last you all day because this one is potent. I feel like all of the Atelier Materi fragrances are potent. Then yeah, check this one out or maybe get a discovery set from the brand because they have some very underrated fragrances. I have three in my collection now and I do wanna keep collecting them. But yeah, thank you so much for Atelier Materi for gifting me this fragrance. It's one that I probably wouldn't have picked myself just by reading the notes. So that's a really nice thing when something pleasantly surprises you and actually blew me away to be quite honest. So yeah, that was Narcisse Taji by Atelier Materi. The next fragrance is an absolute love and I've definitely mentioned it in quite a few videos and it is by M. Mikalef and it is Ylang in Gold. And this is definitely what I would class as an elegant floral, but it's a unique elegant floral. And it comes in two different packaging styles. So this, I believe, is the limited edition one. And you also get a clear bottle and it has um, glittery particles in it. Very, very beautiful. I think the juice inside here is also that glittery kind of fine mica powder, but I'm not too sure. I'm gonna spray it on my skin and see if I can see anything. It's hard to tell when it's wet, so let's just do a test. Yeah, I think this still has the mica in it, you know. So I do think it looks beautiful when you spritz it all over your collarbone. Your Lang in gold. This is what I would call a holiday fragrance or a high summer, spring summer type of wear. It's tropical, it's fruity, it's a little bit floral, it smells like an amazing cocktail. One of my absolute favorite fruity florals in my collection. And there is a lot of fruits in here, but I would class it more as a floral and definitely an elegant, fun, vibrant floral. Sorry, I just said floral so many times in a row. This is a Ylang Ylang fragrance, but I definitely perceive a banana note and I know other people do too. It's not listed anywhere in the notes. It does have something that just says fruit notes. So maybe the banana comes from there. And then you get a really nice kind of coconut milk vibe in here too. It's a little bit lactonic, but not really too lactonic. It's lifted beautiful with the ylang ylang. You've got geranium, you've got lychee, you've got peach, you've even got a rosemary note. Do not let that put you off. This smells incredible. There's sandalwood, there's mint. Hold up, let me just read you the notes because this is a real concoction and it's why I feel like it smells like a cocktail. So the notes are fruity notes, peach, lychee, sage, tangerine, rosemary, artisma, geranium, bitter orange, ylang ylang, sandalwood, mint, magnolia, rose, lily of the valley, vanilla, coconut, moss, and oak moss. Those base notes, so the vanilla, coconut, musk, and oak moss, I definitely smell specifically in the dry down, so that is really accurate. I'm not sure if I get the mint or not, I do get the magnolia, I do get the lily of the valley, the sandalwood, the ylang ylang. I kind of get the peach, but I get more of a banana note, like I said. I'm not sure if I get the rosemary and artisma at all. But to me, it's a very tropical fragrance. I've mentioned it before that it smells like a tropical cocktail. I love this. 
It's got a slight powdered kind of vibe to it. It could be like a sweet with that powdered sugar on it, but I'm getting a fruity kind of pina colada, add a little bit of banana. You've got your lang ylang bushes around you. And yeah, it's truly special. If you can't guess already, I love this fragrance. So highly recommend getting a sample of it if you like the sound of the notes. Best believe this will be coming with me on vacation this year. I've only got one, no, maybe two holidays planned. One's kind of business though, but I'm going on my honeymoon this year and it is kind of more of a tropical island and this will be coming with me for sure. I love it. Two pieces. So that was M. Mikalev's Ylang in gold. And last, but by no means least, we have Memo Paris Majuri. And I haven't spoken about this one in a while. I feel like this is a more spring summer scent, which is why I haven't really talked about it in some of my more recent videos. And I think this is one of the most pretty Memo Paris bottles because I really like the blue design and another fragrance with tuberose in it. So yeah, I think that was four out of the six that I've talked about. But the floral that is most prominent is jasmine and there's three different types of jasmine in here. I wanna get these correct, so let me just quickly look. We have jasmine sandback, we have Indian jasmine and we have Egyptian jasmine. And I might as well read you the other notes while I'm here. It has peach, another fragrance with peach. This must be the third, if not the fourth fragrance. Australian sandalwood, marigold, suede, clary sage, turmeric, Indian tuberose and Sicilian bergamot. And what I get when I smell Madurai is definitely that jasmine. It's very, very prominent and it is one of the most beautiful jasmine fragrances that I've ever smelt. I really pick out the turmeric note and I've definitely asked for feedback on this before to see if other people pick it out and you let me know in the comments too when I last spoke about this one. Some people pick it out, some people do not. I do, and I feel like it gives it this really rich kind of earthiness, and turmeric has a really interesting smell. The way I normally perceive turmeric, have you ever tried those ginger and turmeric shots that you get in some coffee shops? It's kind of like a health food thing, and it's got this dry, rich, spiced smell. It's really difficult to explain, but I get it within this composition only in the dry down. I don't get it in the opening. The opening of this is pretty sweet. You're definitely getting the peach note in the opening. So you get a blast of sweet jasmine. You can definitely perceive that tuberose. And then you also get that sweet peach. I get the zesty and juicy bergamot, which gives a light kind of sparkling quality to this. I'm not sure if I get the marigold or the clary sage. In my head, because I know the notes in there, I feel like I do, but if I went into this blind without hearing any of the notes or reading any of the notes, would I pick that out? I'm not sure. But if you like a sweet jasmine fragrance, I would highly recommend checking out Madurai by Memo because I feel like it does have a unique scent profile. I have not smelt anything like this before. It's definitely unique within my collection and I feel like this is a slightly different elegant floral fragrance. So yeah, that was my last recommendation for today. I hope you enjoyed my elegant floral fragrance recommendations. Please do let me know if any of them stood out to you. Maybe you own them or want to own them, but I would love to hear your feedback and get a conversation going within the comments. But I wanna know what are your favorite elegant floral fragrances because you always come to me with such great recommendations and I read all of your comments. I try to respond to them all, but if the video has been up three days or more, sometimes I don't respond. I'm really sorry about that. I try to respond to everything, but best believe I do read all of the comments and I thank you so much for them so please do keep them coming you have helped me find some of my favorite fragrances in my collection so honestly from the bottom of my heart thank you please do keep them coming don't keep them to yourself i need to know the tea thank you so much for watching today it's been a pleasure as always i hope to see you in a video to come have a wonderful day and goodbye